Welcome to the Rum Revival. My name is Arminder, and today I'm highlighting a number of newly released and newly announced rums from the last month or so. Now, some of these rums have only just come out, so it might take a few weeks or maybe months before they're available throughout the country, but definitely keep an eye out for them. Okay, let's start off with probably the craziest rum on this list, and frankly, maybe the craziest rum that will be released this entire year. This is the Holmes Key Infinity. Now, get ready for some numbers. It's a blend of rums from seven countries, 13 distilleries, five of which are no longer in operation. Now, the youngest rum in the blend is 20 years old, and the oldest is 47. Now, it's bottled at 58% ABV, and a total of 100 bottles have been produced. And it's priced at $1,500. Yeah, $1,500. Now, the countries featured in the blend are Guyana, Jamaica, Guadeloupe, Trinidad, Barbados, Venezuela, and Brazil. Now, in terms of the lost distilleries that are included, this includes rums from the Iflot and Enmore estates in Guyana, Caroni in Trinidad, Gardel in Guadeloupe, and Apri in Brazil. Now, it's named Infinity because essentially it's an infinity bottle. If you're not familiar with the idea behind an infinity bottle, it's basically where you take like a leftover remaining little bit of rum in your bottle and you add it to uh, an empty bottle. And anytime you have a little bit left in a bottle, instead of just chucking it away, like it's not enough for like a, a ounce pour or anything like that, you dump it into this kind of kind of ever evolving growing blend of rums. But some people do it very intentionally, purposely picking uh, certain kind of spirits and certain proportions. And other folks will just toss whatever they have a little bit of and toss it in the bottle and eventually they have their own custom, very unique blend. And that's kind of what Maine Rum Company out in Liverpool did with the cast that this rum blend is from. If you're not familiar, Main Rum Company, they buy casks of rum from distilleries all over the world and then sell them to different brands. Now, over the years, what they did was they took small amounts of various samples that they had and tossed it into an X rum cask and started adding more and more rums. And eventually the last rum was added to that cask in November 2003. And then the entire thing was aged 20 years. At that point, then Homesky bought the cask and then bottled it up and are now selling it to us for $1,500. So I actually tried my hand at my own rum infinity bottle. It's what I have right here. That's an old uh, Mount Gay XO uh, bottle that was empty. So I started tossing in various rums, uh, everything from Appleton 12, Appleton 8, Mount Gay XO, Smith & Cross, a bunch of aged rum agricoles, you name it. And boy, was it garbage. It was just like a <laughs> muddled mess. So generally, I'm not really a fan of the concept, but I trust Eric K over at Holmes Key and the folks at Maine Rum and their palate, so I'm sure it's not gonna be like bad. And one cool thing with that sticker price is that you also get a 52 page book that kind of goes into the history of the rum and the various components that make up the blend. Why is it so expensive? Well, frankly, because of all that old rum and the fact that there's defunct distilleries involved and the fact that there are you know, only 100 bottles, you combine all of that up, but there are people who will spend $1,500 for that rum, for sure. Now, if, I don't know, say 1,500 of y'all wanna chip in a dollar and send that my way, then uh, I will gladly buy a bottle and drink it and give you my opinion. Hey, real quick, it's Arminder from the future here and man, have I seen some stuff. Anyways, I've got some new information regarding the Holmes Key Infinity. In addition to the 700 milliliter bottle for $1,500, it's also going to be available in 200 milliliter bottles for $300. 200 milliliters is about six and three quarter ounces. Now the catch is that the 200 milliliter bottles are going to be extremely limited in number. Now I have no exact numbers, but I suspect these will sell out faster than the larger bottles given the lower price point. That's it for me in the future. I'm gonna now hand it off to young, sweet, innocent little me from the past. Hey, Arminder, if you're watching this right now, do yourself a favor and stay home on Saturday, please. Now, if you're looking for something a bit more affordable from Holmes Key, well, they have two more new releases. First up is the Barbados 2012 Port Cask release. This is a pot calm blend of eight-year-old four-square rums that were then finished 18 months in second fill port casks in New York. It's bottled at 55% ABV and priced at a much more affordable $110. Next up is their Venezuela 2007 15-year. It's molasses based calm distilled and aged all 15 years in Venezuela. It's bottled at 55% ABV and priced at $100. Now you might have noticed that I didn't really mention the name of the distillery that made the rum. Now on the label, it's listed as Distilleria Sofa, but as far as I know, there really isn't a distillery by that name. Due to trademark agreements, that's the name used in these instances when the rum from the actual distillery is bottled by third parties. This is potentially, possibly, probably, pretty likely Santa Teresa. Now I think Santa Teresa's branded offerings are you know, pretty fine, but I actually am very excited for this release because I'm hoping that it's 
very similar to a release in the UK from Bristol Spirits, one of the OGs of the UK independent bottling scene. See, they put out a 12-year-old Venezuela release, also from Distillery of Sofa, and I got a chance to try it at the Whiskey Exchange's rum show last year, and I loved it. I, I really, really liked it, it was great, and I had the opportunity to buy it, but for some reason I didn't, I ended up buying other bottles, and now I've come to regret that, but I'm hoping that this Holmes Key release is hopefully somewhere close to that. Speaking of Venezuela and Santa Teresa, the next rum is the second edition to Santa Teresa's cask finish series. It's their Arabica coffee cask finish release. The concept behind the series is that they take their standard 1796 and finish it in a number of different cask types. The first one was their Speyside whiskey cask finish, and now we have this one. So 1796 by itself is a pot calm still blend of rums that were first aged four years next bourbon casks, and then age in a Solera system. Now, for this release, it's then finished for three months in American white oak casks that previously aged a rum-based cold brew coffee made from Arabica coffee beans. Now, besides the finishing, I think the real notable thing here is that it's bottled at 46% ABV as opposed to the standard 1796's 40%. Now, the other interesting thing that I noticed in the press material for this release is that they clearly mentioned there that they added three grams of sugar per bottle. Now, I have no problem with that added sugar. I just found it so refreshing that they volunteer that information. That's awesome. I want to see more of that, please, from everyone. Now, in terms of pricing, it should be around $50. And real talk, I am a sucker for all things coffee, coffee liqueur, coffee ice cream, coffee yogurt, coffee coffee, I guess, uh, you name it. So given all that, I'm pretty actually intrigued by this release and I will be buying a bottle to see if it's any good. Here's a question, what's better than two new rums from Venezuela? How about three? Next up, we have independent baller Rolling Fork Spirits out of Indiana, and this is their new Venezuela Five Year. The rum is from Alcoholes y Anejos Monegas, which may or may not actually distill rum. There's not a whole lot of information on them out there, at least on the internet. And also, there's no real information for this release on whether or not it's a calm still rum or a pot still rum, or at least in terms of what I could find, but it's probably safer to guess it's a calm still rum. It's aged two years in Venezuela in an ex-bourbon cask, and then another three and a half years in an ex-weeded bourbon cask in Indiana. It's bottled at 58.08% ABV and priced at $55. And it's a pretty limited release with only 114 bottles. At the time of filming, bottles were available directly from Rolling Fork's website. Also, saying at the time of filming makes this whole thing seem far more fancier than it actually is. I'm just like a dude in his little tiny office and there's shit everywhere. Uh, so yeah, I, I don't know. I felt really weird saying at the time of filming, but yeah, there you go. And the next single cask release from Rolling Fork is the Fiji 14 Year. This is a molasses based pot distilled rum from South Pacific Distillery. It was first aged 13 years in an ex-bourbon cask and then an additional 15 months in an ex-weeded bourbon cask in Indiana. It's bottled at 60.45% ABV and priced at $125 for a 750 milliliter bottle. And if you thought the Venezuela was limited with 114 bottles, this one is even more limited with 60 bottles total, which you can also get at Rolling Fork's site. And the last Rolling Fork's release is one that's actually been out for more than a month, maybe even close to two. And it's a total miss on my part. This actually should have been in my previous new releases video, but hey, I'm just one person scouring the internet for information about new rum releases, so I'm bound to miss certain things. And hey, if any of you brands are watching this right now, do me a favor and like give me a heads up when you're about to release a rum, or like, I don't know, if there's like a contact list that you have that you send press releases to, add me to that, that'd be great, you know? It'd make my life a lot easier. Okay, so this release is the Weeded Cask Wonder. It's a blend of four barrels of four square rum from Barbados. They were aged eight years at the distillery and then an additional two years in Indiana in 10-year-old weeded casks from Frankfort, Kentucky that, I don't be real, I don't know a whole lot about bourbon, but what limited research I did and what limited things I know about bourbon would mean the fact that they're 10-year-old weeded casks from Frankfort, Kentucky, that it probably, I think, came from Buffalo Trace and that it previously maybe held old Rip Van Winkle tenure, I think. But half of those words I just said, I have no idea what they mean, so eh. But I do know it's bottled at 57.4% ABV and priced at $100. Now, since it's been out for almost two months, it is sold out on Rolling Fork's website, though bottles are still available through Sealbox. And since we've been talking about a bunch of independent bottlers, let's round it out with the newest release from Raising Glasses. This is their Ethereal, which according to them is the first Madeira rum from a US independent bottler. 
Now, Madeira is a small Portuguese island in the Atlantic Ocean off the northwest coast of Africa, and they make a lot of rum there. Now, this release is from Orenzio Distillery. It's made from cane juice, it's pot distilled, and a blend of a number of rums that are aged three years in French oak Madeira casks. Bottled at 60.4% ABV and comes in this adorable 375 milliliter bottle, and it's priced at $50. Now, I've had a couple of sips of this so far, and this is in fact my first aged rum from Madeira, and I gotta say, uh, I really like this. There is a like savory, vegetal, earthy quality that I'm really, really enjoying. Okay, so enough with the independent bottlers for now. Let's talk about some original producers, and I wanna start off with a very cool new rum producer and brand, it's Rum et al. Now the force behind it is Robin Smith from the This Blog's new YouTube channel. Now not only does Robin make YouTube videos, she's also a chemical engineer and distiller. And Rum et al. is a collaboration with her and Dead of Night Distillery in LA. And the first rum to be released by Robin is Baseline. So Robin has a couple of videos where she really gets into the nitty and gritty of how the rum is made, so I'm not gonna get into all that, but at a high level, this is a molasses-based rum, and it's fermented between 16 to 22 days using a distiller's yeast. And then it's double pot distilled to 75% ABV. Now you actually have two different versions that you can buy. There's the still strength 75% ABV version that comes in a 375 milliliter bottle for $48. And then there's the version that's proofed down to 49% ABV and bottled in a 750 and priced at $54. Now this batch was only 12 and a half gallons, so there weren't really a whole lot of bottles produced and there aren't a whole lot left. So if you're interested and if you happen to live in California, you can buy bottles on the brand's website. I'm very excited to see what Robin does in the future. You know, there really seems to be this emphasis on experimentation and transparency, and that's pretty awesome. And the next batch, what I understand is that it's gonna take the leftovers of this batch's distillation and use it for dunder. That's pretty cool. And for purely not selfish reasons, I think it's really cool to see YouTubers have their own rum, whether it's something like what Robin's done as an actual producer, or what Spike's done with the Hamilton uh, Breezeway blend. I think that's really, really cool, and I am totally uh, in awe of that, and yeah, I'd like to have my own rum, or be associated with my own rum, or someone's rum, I, I, I'd take that. Uh, yeah, am I throwing something out there? I mean, there's, no, I'm not throwing, I mean, yes, I guess I am throwing something out there, uh, a longing, if you will. Next up, we have maybe the releases that I'm the most excited for in this video. It's the brand new Chiranda Uruapan single cane varietal cane juice releases from Casa Churrasco Spirits out of Michoacan. So we've got the Caña Criolla, the Caña Cristalina, and the Caña Mexicana. All three of these single varietals are used to make the regular Agricola release from Chiranda Uruapan. Now, all three of those cane varietals are grown in red volcanic soil and over 4,000 feet in elevation. Now, after harvesting, the cane is crushed and the juice is open air wild fermented in wooden vats and then distilled on a wood fired copper pot still. Now all three are then bottled unaged at 49% ABV and priced around $50. I happen to have them right there. I'd love to see them there. I think it just adds a nice little pop of color. I have not actually opened them, but I'm excited that I have them. It seemed like they're pretty hard to come by. Super stoked. As y'all know, I love Chiranda Uruapan. I love how colorful they are. They're probably gonna live there forever now. Uh, at some point I will crack them open and try them. Next up, we have the eighth addition to the Appleton Estates Hearts Collection. This is the 1998. Now the Hearts Collection is a series of pot still single mark bottlings from a specific vintage year and they're high proof and usually aged a very long time and fairly limited in quantity. Now the 1998, as you can imagine, was distilled in 1998 and bottled last year, making it a 25 year old rum. It's actually a blend of 19 casks of that same mark, of that same vintage. It's bottled at 63% ABV and there are a total of 2,706 bottles and they're priced at around $650. So I think if all you've had from Appleton is their core lineup, you should try a pour of one of these Hearts Collection releases. Yeah, they are pricey pours at a bar, but I think they showcase a whole other side to Appleton, especially as these are, you know, all pot still releases instead of the stuff in the core lineup, which is pot call blends. And lastly, we have a new release from Plantare. This is Mr. Fog Navy Rum. Now this is the first release in what is going to be an annual limited release series that is an homage to Navy rums. So this particular release is a blend of rums from West Indies Rum Distillery in Barbados, Trinidad Distillers, Diamond Distillery in Guyana, and National Rums of Jamaica. All those rums are aged some amount of time in ex-bourbon casks in their countries of origin, and then they're sent to the southwest of France where they're further aged. In addition to that further aging in France, the rums go through, quote, extensive oxygenation in large open wooden vats, 
replicating the humid environment of the British docks, enhancing maturation. This process ensures a rum with a rich, mellow flavor and enhanced smoothness." Unquote. I gotta say, nothing really says the British Royal Navy and London docks like the south of France. Now the blend is bottled at 55.7% ABV and priced at $36. Now in conjunction with the release of the rum, a new 256 page book by Matt Petrick and Alexandre Gabriel of Planeray is being released titled Exploring 300 Years of Royal Navy Rum and Its Techniques. Now it's based on Matt's years of research into the history of London Dock Rum and Royal Navy Rum. It includes an overview of Britain's rum history, of London's West India docks, of rum merchants there and how Britain's military sourced rum and the actual production process of the blending of those rums. So if you kind of geek out on that kind of stuff, it might be worth checking out that book. Well, there you go. Those were the newly released or newly announced rums from the last month or so. Now, do any of them stand out to you? Are you planning on getting any of them? I'd love to know, so please let me know by leaving a comment down below. And if you're interested in some exclusive behind the scenes content and first impressions videos where I try rum for the very first time and give you my gut reaction to it, then consider checking out and supporting me on my Patreon page there. I have tons of content there that I think you'll really like. Thanks so much for watching. Catch y'all next time. Cheers.